Hello, do you like New Japan Pro Wrestling? Are you a Shin Nihon freak? If so, check out the Super Jcast with Joel and Damon on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. And even if you fucking hate New Japan Pro Wrestling, listen to the Super Jcast anyway. Not just for our great show reviews, analysis, and pastrami sandwiches, mm-hmm. but there's also usually some dick jokes somewhere in the obligatory opening 30 minutes of absolute nonsense we chat about every single week. That's the Super Jcast for all all the best talk about New Japan Pro Wrestling, crisps, and pornography. Hello there, my name's Neil David, and I'm the host of Euro Graps Express, the podcast exclusively dedicated to the wrestling of Europe. If it's wrestling, and it happens in Europe, and it's good, we talk about it. Whether it's Rev Pro, Progress, WXW, Passion Pro, Pro Wrestling Chaos, Pro Wrestling North, we don't care, we talk about them all. If it's good, and it's exciting, I want to share it with you. We're on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. Check us out on the feed. Check us out on Twitter at EuroGrapsEXP. And join us for chat about European wrestling and a little bit of chat about cheese. Hopefully see you there. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Hello everybody, <laughs> so rude already. and welcome to the Super Jagdust, I'm Joel, joined by David McDonald, it is Friday 27th of October 2023, this is episode 278, I tried, I really tried to put both the kids to sleep before starting this recording, it's not happened, Esther's asleep, Arthur is not asleep, um, with the exciting news that we have a new addition to our family, we've just got a little kitten, Damon, so Mally drove to Wales today to pick up this cat because she was hell-bent on getting um, a Siamese cat because they're hypoallergenic. They don't leave fur everywhere. Sure. And they're, they're generally, like, really sociable. You may remember the, the cat I had before, Gatti. She yeah. was a Siamese cat. So Maddie really wanted a Siamese and was willing to do, like, a basically five, six-hour round drive by herself to, to pick up this cat from Wales. So the cat is here. Yeah, uh, listeners, you can probably hear the cat, which is <laughs> mewing. Um, this cat has been seems, nonstop, seems right. very vocal, very uh, yeah. <laughs> has a lot to say and a lot of opinions, uh, a lot of takes. Yeah, that's going to be good sleeping for you, right? <laughs> I mean, what a throwback for the the glory days of the Super J cast when I had Scampy and Gatti doing run-ins. <laughs> now I've got. Uh, I've got my son here, Arthur, sitting on my lap, and um, we've got cat in the background, which we've tentat- tentatively named Scrumpy. Oh, Scrumpy's come over here. Oh. You want to be on the podcast? Because we live in a house, the house is called the Cider Barn. Um, Mally wanted to call the cat Cider. Oh. And my mum, as an alternative, suggested Scrumpy, which yeah, <laughs> most people know is like a. Are you familiar with Scrumpy? No, I have no idea what the fuck. Well, I don't know. What is that? Okay, so Scrumpy is a, it's a type of cider from the west of England, west oh. country, and um, it's traditionally made with just apples, so they don't add like any juice or sweeteners. Typically unpasteurized, um, not carbonated, so it's it's generally a lot stronger than regular cider. Right, gets right to the point. Um, right, yeah, cool. right. You, you you get fucked up on Scrumpy. Um, so, yeah, this, this scrumpy's come over here now. You want to be on the podcast? Um, how are you, Damon? Are you, are you well? <laughs> Man, you got your hands full over there. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, look. As the great Chumble Wumble once sung, <laughs> uh, you get knocked down, you get back up again. I drink the whiskey drink, I drink the vodka oh, drink, sure I drink did. the vodka drink, I drink the cider <laughs> drink. I don't know, well. We don't have to talk about that much. Uh, yeah, you know, it hasn't been the best of weeks. I don't need to get into the details. No one gives a fuck. Uh, so we tried to record yesterday, and uh, I was in no shape to be recording. <laughs> it wound up being me talking to Mally for oh, about 15 minutes, I think, right? A good 15 minutes. And Joel was just like, ah, we're putting a pin in this. We're, we're calling it a night. Let's see if we can do this tomorrow. <laughs> 
That's probably a good idea. Which wasn't because of you. It was no, because but what? we just had a date night, and I thought there might be a chance for me to cash in on that, get a bit of love with it. I, yeah. It didn't work. It didn't work. That's crazy. It didn't work. Because I thought, uh, I thought my my swaying her would would have, would have just put her right, right right over the moon. Yeah, you know, just like <laughs> can't wait. Yeah, that was the plan. I mean, I was listening to the stuff you were talking about. I was just like, yeah, this is definitely going to yeah, yeah. get her in the mood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, but all right, we're here. We're here. We are here with bells on, and uh, we have uh, lots of exciting stuff. And we uh, a packed house over at Joel's uh, England compound with uh, uh, I have to ask you this though because I, I I just need some clarity and I need for you to tell me uh, that it will not be the case. But if I ever go there, I am not peeing in a bucket, right? <laughs> right? No, you okay. get no. So uh, the the one drawback of this wonderful house we got is, as Marley's told you yesterday, there's only one bathroom, but there's two really nice bedrooms mm-hmm. either side of the bathroom. So you can have one of those. Okay. But they we have-, have a third bedroom, which is like on the sort of mezzanine floor of the house, which has no bathroom. Uh, as long no, as there's one, there. yeah. As long as there's one, you know, that's all yeah. I care about. I mean, I don't need my own. Um, but yeah, I was a little, I was a little worried that she was offering me a bucket, and I was like, I don't really think you want me to do that because, <laughs> because if I do that, oh lord, yeah, boy. Uh, right. Well, that's good news. That's comforting news. Hey, what's going on in the world of New Japan Pro Wrestling, Joel? Because that's why we're all here. That's what we're all excited about, and. Uh, well, I'm sure we're um, all excited for the upcoming events and upcoming uh, stuff. So uh, why don't why don't you tap into the uh, community's buzz and give it to me? Give me what everyone's excited about. Nothing, huh? Let's oh. do a little bit of a wrestling observer news, like a Hall of Fame Ooh, talk before okay. we get into the news. Because I, th- I mean, I I've not finalized my picks yet. I know you've submitted yours, yes. but I think for the interest of our listeners. Shingo Takagi, Tomohiro Ishii, where do you stand on their inclusion? Uh, I none, none of those two have that made my final ballot. And I do have reasons why, and here are they. Uh, one, the one thing that I struggled with, look, I, I re, and it might be silly of me, who, who you know, it probably is. Uh, I am a, a definite tough grader when it comes to a hall of fame because to me i'm i need the best of the best right now uh i try to to use my own criteria because as much as we want to admit uh there really isn't except your own um it's not like it's a any other professional sport where it's okay this person hit 500 home runs so now he's definitely we have to consider him Right, he needs to be considered uh, in other sports, you know, championships and MVPs and scoring titles, and you name it. Were they completely dominant in their uh, position at, at at the time they played? Is a fact. Wrestling's weird. Like, okay, like you, we want to say, okay, was he a draw? <laughs> Does that mean that he was on top and he definitely drew the tickets because? I don't know if that's always the case. I, I think a lot of times it's a stacked card that helps that. But like, okay. I mean, I, I think we kind of map out that, okay, they were on the main, if they were in the supposed main event of a, of a card, um, we're giving them the kudos of, of drawing that house. Um, work rate. I mean, that seems to me to be incredibly subjective at this point in time. Whereas maybe in the past it wasn't as subjective, but I think now people's minds have been, okay, it might not be for me, but is this great? Is this is this great work rate? And what is that? Like, is that just moves and just like popping you out of your seat? Or is that just being smart and intelligent and knowing when to do what when? Um, so for me, there's a ton of factors. Um, so specifically on Ishii, uh, I had two people that I kind of were were my struggles. Were my okay? Does this guy 
should this guy be in a Hall of Fame? Uh, it was him and Junkyard Dog that I had that internal conversation with. Um, look, you cannot doubt the fact that consistently for years, Tomohiro Ishii has been just stellar in the ring. And it, and yes, we can complain a little bit just because that's what we like to do, that the style is the same. and the blah, 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 blah. You, you know, an Ishii match is an Ishii match. Fine. Fair enough. I would say consistently, though, for the past whew, 15 years, maybe longer, like he has been consistently great. Um, and working that style consistently great, that's got to pay a toll on a person's body. Um, interviews, like mm, I think he, he would even be the, the first to admit that his interviews are lacking. Um, you know, g- give me the, the, the shows that he, that we can kind of guesstimate to say, okay, he drew that house or him against somebody drew that house. And I don't think that there are that many. Um, is he an international star? I think with a pocket of fans, he is right. But I think outside of people who would listen to this podcast or, are fans of New Japan Pro Wrestling. I don't think they they could point Tomohiro Ishii out of a police lineup. Um, and I think about impact of the sport. Like, how impactful was Tomohiro Ishii? From a New Japan Pro Wrestling perspective, I think he was, and, and still is, an important piece in their card structure and, 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 and who, who New Japan Pro Wrestling is. But at no point would I say that he was a top five guy in the promotion. Um, and if there, and if it, if it did happen, let me know, <laughs> right? Because um, I don't say it. I don't. I don't. I don't really feel that. Um, so that's why I wouldn't know. And and again, junkyard for maybe just the opposite reasons. Junkyard was in some of the biggest money drawing feuds wherever he went uh, in wrestling history. And he uh, was either 1 or 1A one when it came to any company's uh, baby face ladder, right? Uh, I think he's well-known. I think people, the average Joe on the street knows the name Junkyard Dog. Might not know everything about him, but they've heard the name, at least in the States anyway. Um. But, you know, in ring, I mean, it it wasn't great to start and it really fell apart toward the end. Um, so, you know, that's kind of like, OK, so he, he checks a few boxes. Absolutely. But is he a Hall of Famer? And I don't know that to be the case. So that's where I said, tell me here, Ishii, I got to be honest with you. I feel like there's so much more left in the tank that I, I would I'm comfortable not putting him on now, knowing that. It probably we might want to put him in. I mean, he he was an IWGP heavyweight champion. He was a big time piece of Dragon Gate. He was um, in ring, you know, t- t- tremendous for uh, countless years. Um, so that might be one that, yes, he'll get in, but maybe not right now because let's just see what else he can do. Yeah, um, I, my arguments against Ishii are sort of not dissimilar to the ones that I used against him being given the gold watch title reign. I think him not being in the Hall of Fame, uh, he, he could be like the gatekeeper for the Hall of Fame. He's the guy where you draw the line and be like, no, okay. Not him, but everyone above that level, yeah, they can get in. But I'm, I'm on the fence. Like For my, <laughs> my Japan picks, um, I think... It's a no-brainer to have the beauty pair. I thought I've got two two votes left, and it's going to be two from either. <laughs> like going on. Uh, You're doing C- good. Sima, Sima or Shima? Is it Shima or Sima? I don't I, even know how to pronounce it. Yes, name. we know who we're talking about. I, I, I'm with the I'm with the Sima. That's, that's where I go. Sima. Yeah. It will be two from the three of Sima, Shingo, and Ishii, and I'm leaning Sima 
I just shouldn't go at the moment. But, uh, okay. Yeah, that's that's where I'm being. Uh, and I don't think. I should... mean, for me, the biggest the biggest dilemma is whether or not I vote for Big Daddy again. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the question on everyone's list. Is you? It really is <laughs> everyone. Me. Yeah, I know. I here's the thing. I've seen him in in ring, and he is god awful. But that being said, I mean, I think when it comes to British pro wrestling, he is just a, a legendary figure. And that, again, that might just be because he was at the right place at the right time. But like he he was absolutely over as fuck. And, you know, I, it, it, that he gave what the people wanted. And is that a good worker? Like, is that the 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 epitome of a of a pro wrestler? Um, you know, I th- and I think people sometimes get carried away when when it comes to stuff outside of the typical wrestling observer fan voting in the Hall of Fame. Um, like he's one of those guys that's like okay, like. I'm going to be honest with you. He's one of those guys where it's kind of like, how can he not be? But in the same breath, I don't vote. I don't vote in that category because I just don't feel well and averse. You know, I just know. And and here's a point to the plus of him being in. I don't follow it. I don't. I'm not really. That's not really my scene. I got to be honest. I know who he is. I know. I know what he's. What, what like I know of him. So you know that's gotta that's gotta speak volumes. Um, in some cases, and that's that was my junkyard dog ar- argument. You know, people fucking know him, right? People don't know. I don't know. Fuck, eh, I don't even know who else. Is. Jerry Briscoe. Like if I walked up to someone and say, "Hey, you know who Jerry Briscoe is?" Mm, I know. Hey, do you know who junkyard dog is? And they'll like, you know, <laughs> you know, don't, don't fucking get into it. And and I think that says something. I think mainstream recognition has to play something. Now, again, if, if that were the case, then, well, let's put it this way. The most famous pro wrestlers of all time, Hogan, Cena, Austin, Brock, uh, and apparently Jimmy Snooker, because anybody who mentions anything about, oh, yeah, Jimmy Snooker. Um, but, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. So I went in Japan. Uh, I did with the uh, I went I went with the Zima. <laughs> I said Zima because that's funny. Uh, but we know Zima Shima. Uh, because I think the argument for him is uh, has been stated a trillion times of what he meant to a promotion like like Dragon Gate. Um, the the ring works there. Uh, the importance to the promotion. Is he one of those guys that, again, mainstream people would be like, yep, yeah, oh, probably not. But I just think for what he represented and 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 being a face of the company for as long as he has and being as influential to a certain style, I think he, I think he, it warrants it. The only other um, Japanese uh, name that I have as, yep, yeah, he should be in, uh, I have Hayabusa. So for me, like he's a guy that that was the face of FMW after Onita. Um, I feel as though he his in ring stuff was was outstanding. His uh, importance to the company was it, it can't be overstated in a time when the promotion could have easily fucking fallen apart um, and was in the midst of falling apart. Um, he he's adaptable to style in the sense that. Um, he high flying yet death matches yet even technically sound matches. Um, so yeah, he got my vote as well. Um, and that was really it. Um, across the board, I went, I did go slaughter. I did go chic. I did, I did do chic as well, because again, I just think like there, there was for the longest time. And again, we're playing off of, geographical world politicky things, but that's pro wrestling. He lived off that fucking gimmick for years. And at not once was it like, oh, the, the heat has died down. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like from uh, for for decades, for decades, he could milk that. Um, I'm not saying he's the greatest wrestler in his in his later years. And again, people might be say I'm hypocritical because I I do use Junkyard Dog as man, but this guy fucking fell apart. She fell apart. Um. But again, that being said, mainstream name, people know the fucking Iron Sheik. Whether that's good or bad at this point, they know who the fuck he is or or, or was. Um, and I, again, I don't think there was a bigger heel. Like he's he, like for me, he's in my top ten all time heels. Like I, I, I'm hard pressed not putting him in top five, maybe all time heels, all time heels. Like Iron Sheik's on that fucking list. Uh, when, when you talk about it. So, again, not to beat a dead horse, but uh, I went Sheik, Slaughter, Hayabusa, Sima. Um, what else did I fucking do? Oh, I did. Um, I only did one uh, outside, like, you know, not in ring guy. Uh, and that was um, Ted Turner. Like, how the fuck can Ted Turner not be any? Like, if it wasn't for Ted Turner allowing pro wrestling and or at least recognizing pro wrestling as cheap uh you know not expensive um cost worthy uh programming i don't i don't i don't know where we would be um and him having a feud with McMahon and him you know him willing to invest in pro wrestling at certain levels and certain degrees. I don't know if we would, and I, I, I just, I'd be very curious as to where we would be um, without him leading that, that, that charge and him really kind of popularizing pro wrestling as a syndicated uh, entertainment form. And, and, and we, and I haven't even touched on WC, WCW being a legitimate threat at one point to WWF, which hadn't happened. And that's, you know, I'm not saying he's, you know, the smartest guy when it comes to pro wrestling, but 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 for damn fucking sure, the guy was smart enough to be like, okay, I mean, you know, it cost me X to make and I'm making this much. Give me more. Can we scale this in any way? So he's on my list. There's been some really outstanding audio on the uh, Voices Wrestling Patreon. I was halfway through listening to one with a guy called Ethan Tyler, who's doing the rest of the world stuff. So that has been really interesting. Even if you're not uh, a voter in the Hall of Fame. You're not important? Is that what you're trying to say? Even if you're not important? (laughs) Yeah, even if you're a a piece of scum who... Yeah, not worthy. ...is an insignificant insignificant fleck of... uh, Theses on the the boot of the pro wrestling world, then it's still quite interesting to learn about these people. So yeah. you're do not that. getting. Oh, that, don't I don't care. You're not getting that email from the Juno account. <laughs> <laughs> I like getting two emails in quick succession, and then the second email saying use this one. <laughs> oh, it's like your grandpa, you know, uh, first time. <laughs> Juno. He, I mean, seriously, Juno's like, well, we can't go out of business. We do have one. Who oh, is this? Is uh, Mr. Dave Meltzer still has an account with us? Oh, okay. Well, let's not shut down doors. Juno. Can you believe it? I, I have a Netscape account. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Juno. Like, I understand people become attached to an email address and they don't want to change just because they feel that oh, people, people won't care, Dave. Trust me. Trust me, if you went Dave Meltzer at Gmail, no one would blink a fucking eye. Actually, I think people would be upset. I think I think there is a little bit of nostalgia and a little bit of um it is a little heartwarming getting that Juno email. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you know, because there's, there's only one person. No one else is sending you an, an email from a Juno account. It's it's Uncle Dave. And that's a uh it's somewhat of a warm, comforting feeling. Uh it's like you're it's like, you know, like you like your parents baking cookies while you're away on a business trip. It's very comforting, very wholesome. Good job, Dave. Keep, you know what? Keep Juno. Keep the fucking Juno. Keep it. Don't let anybody tell you any different. Well, I'm surprised he's not doing paper ballots. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you probably won by doing, uh, you know, some Google Forms, but... Uh, yeah, well, uh, you know, listen. We don't want any hanging chads, do we? Any, any, any <laughs> hanging chads. 
Ugh. Right. What are we doing? All right. Uh, let's do some wrestling news then. Uh, our favorite Rainmaker, Kazuchika Okada, made an appearance on AEW Dynamite. Mm-hmm. And it seems like the direction is him and Brian Danielson having a rematch at Tokyo Dome. How are you feeling about that? Well, <laughs> I think everyone knows how we feel. I think the match will be, I mean, I think the injury kind of lent itself to the very good possibility of rematches, right? Uh, and multiple ones. And do I like the fact that um, we're relying on AEW talent to be in the ring with one of our top stars? Um, depends, honestly. You would think, logic would kind of have you think that uh, our own, or Debry would be uh, looking at the Tokyo Dome lights. I would hope, but we'll see. Um, look, it's not like it's not like in the history of Wrestle Kingdom and wrestling at the Tokyo Dome, mind you, you, you that you don't have matches like this. Right? It's, there's nothing strange about that, and we've seen we, you can go through just about every single Wrestle Kingdom and be like, okay, well, there's there's one you can put in that bucket and there's another match you can put in that bucket and and you can go back to, you know, near beginnings. So um, it doesn't necessarily rub me the wrong way. I just feel like it's more of, I, I don't want it to help perpetuate a relationship that I don't think we benefit from. Um, but the match itself... I mean, look, I, I don't, I, I, I don't expect anything but it being great. I really don't. I think it will be. Um, to say that it's something that has my juices flowing, I don't know. I'm okay. I'm okay with it, and that's. I, I guess that's where my biggest problem is: is that I'm just okay with it, and that might be, might be a me thing. But I, I mean, is anybody else doing backflips over this? Uh, I think if you liked the first match, then you will probably like this. Yes, yeah. <laughs> sizzling hot take that is. I didn't really care for the first one. This one can't be any worse, surely. I mean, cause the finish was really weird because of the injury, right. but um, yeah. yeah, I think it's got to do better than that for me. Um, again, I've said before, I don't have the nostalgia for Danielson, so I don't rate him as highly as most wrestling fans seem to do. So. Not something particularly exciting for me. I was hoping for him, uh, Okada, defending the Never Six Man titles in some sort of dream match against... <laughs> what, the Road Warriors? P- I don't know. But... <laughs> <laughs> the corpse of the Road Warriors? Um, yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I probably going to do worse than some of them. Um, nah, I think, all kidding aside, you need to have Okada in a singles match in, a, in, a, in, in the biggest show of the year. Like... To, to, I think it would be a sin to put him in a tag match in, at the Dome. He's got to go singles. Um, and I think, here's the thing. Brian Danielson is a outstanding pro wrestler. Um, and, like, if I know he's, I, I'm saying this with the, with all the knowledge of, well, one guy got fucking hurt in the ring. But, uh, you know, I just feel safe with 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 both those guys in the ring taking care of each other, I would hope that uh, we don't have a repeat of uh, like, like I'm being dead honest here. If I, if I were to bet, uh, I would say 99% of the time, both guys walk out of that ring without a scratch. And you know, the one time that they actually do have a match and they actually, one guy gets fucked up. So um, no, I think we're, uh, I, I think we have to have him in a singles match. I want him in a singles match. And I think this match is, again, I think the match will be great. Um, I just worry that I, I don't want it to be something where I think this could easily, I can easily, I can see myself being easily burnt out if this is something that we see again and again. Let's put it that way. I did enjoy the comments from Naito. He was interviewed by 
uh, Justin Barrasso, and he was saying, talking about Danielson, and he was saying uh, back in the day when he was wrestling in New Japan, that Naito would watch Danielson's matches on TV, watch him in the buildings, and that he liked watching him, but ne- <laughs> he never felt that he'd like to wrestle him. So just like completely no soul there. Okay. And then uh, Justin was like, well, how about you know, like a LIJ versus Blackpool Combat Club? And Naito's like, no, sorry, I don't watch foreign wrestlings. I don't know if that's a big match or not. I'm not sure who they are. I'm sure it would be an honour for them to face us, but don't know who they are. Sorry. <laughs> I like that. Like, Look at that. I like that. Naito answer. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I like that cockiness. I like that. I, I do enjoy that from him. I think it's a good good call. Um, let me ask you a question. If you had the opportunity to, I don't think I would be like, I, I wouldn't be running around thrilled that I'm interviewing a guy like Naito. I, or just about any New Japan guy. Like, what, what am I, I need a translator. I need, you know what I mean? Like, what am I going to do it? Through Google Voice or whatever the fuck the translation service? You know what I mean? Like, I just find, I would find that to be incredibly awkward. Um, and, and you'd have to pick up the dinner tab afterwards. Pro, oh, that's right. He does have a history of that, of that, uh, the old Irish exit, as we say. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's a cheapskate, that fucker. So, yeah, I think, uh, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, listen, he, good for them if that, that's what, I, but I would be like, mm, well, I'm good. <laughs> Because what do you do with that? How do you work that? He's not going to get any of our dick jokes, right? (laughs) Or maybe he would. I don't know. All right. But that's that. Uh, Good for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's pop in and see how we're getting on with the Super Junior Tag League. So we've had four shows so far. Uh, There's been some interesting nuggets from the undercards. Oscar Loiba and Yuto Nakashima are teaming up. They're referred to now as young bloods and apparently they're making a uh, a pledge a, pl- a play for world tag league entry so keep an eye on that mm-hmm. i don't know if they are planning to send both of those guys on the traditional excursion but even if it's just a, a young line tag team don't be shocked if we see young bloods in world tag league what? later on this year yeah. no problem there i mean i don't think anybody's complaining about that right no I think Oscar in particular is really starting to grow into the role of monster-like worker, which as a sort of counterpoint to Hikuleo, who's a very different sort of wrestler, mm. Oscar seems to have more of that monster in him. So I'm really excited to see how he develops. And uh, Yuto, for his part, did an excellent version of the uh, Joya dance in uh, a backstage comment under direct from Yota Suji. So... Maybe they can do that. Maybe they can do some dancing. <laughs> That's the highlights. <laughs> That's been the highlights of, of Junior Tag League. Uh, you know, it's funny that you mentioned monsters. And, and uh, I, like, I was kind of thinking that, to me, that's one of the elements that New Japan is desperately lacking. Like, not to get, not to be, you know, old Nostalgia Damon, but, you know, you look back in time and there were, and it, there was always that element of that, those dangerous ass kicking heels that they would bring over, whether it be again, Abby, Brody, Hanson, Vader, Bigelow, Steve Williams, Terry Gordy. Except, the list goes on. Uh, the Steiners, um, just guys who will kick your fucking head in. Um, as opposed to, I don't know. Guys who are maybe a little bit more finesse. Like, I miss that element of we're going to beat the shit out of you. And when the time is right for your baby faces to finally get the win, it's going to mean something. Um, there is going to be a physical fight for them to to get a win. Like, I miss that. And I don't think, like, I'm hard-pressed to think of a guy, even in New Japan right now, that kind of fits that mold. I would have thought, uh, well, I, I think the bigger problem is, is that who would you tap? Like, who would you, like, who would be, who fits that mold that they can bring in? Who fits that description? And it's like, I don't know of anybody that 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 is that person. Uh, do you? Well, they did have Jonah last year, but mm. 
Yeah, that was, that yeah, that was probably. I, I, I think. Yeah, Gabe Kidd has that monster in him, and I think he and Alex Coughlin have that sort of crazy energy about them, like you know, Killer Elite Squad did. There's a sort of recent comparison. Yeah, but they're not but, tall. Uh, they're not monsters. Yeah, no, yeah you know right. what I mean. He's a buzzhog, you little Tasmanian devil, but he's not this fucking beast that will just you. You got to get through. Um, I don't know. They, they should give Joe Kratos a chance. Man. I really think every time he's been in Japan, he seems to. Yeah. Well, for himself. Yeah, that's not. I mean, that's not a bad name. But, you know, I just uh, like I don't know who that person would be that would be even close to being available. But yeah, the, probably the last one we had that was of that cut of that cloth was was Jonah. And what a disappointment that fucking turned out to be. Now, I mean, you know, in, in, in the end, but it was like that could have been really great. Like, and it was it was on its way to being pretty fucking fun. Um, and then you know. The check writing happened, <laughs> and the way we go. But what an after! Like, is he even uh, like? What is he doing now? I, I have no idea what he's doing now. Like, I, I you you could tell me that he's like working in a pizza shop somewhere, and I'd be like, okay, I, mean, I don't I don't know. Is he still in WWE? Yeah, I last I heard, is he the Mrs. Bodyguard or something? I don't, oh my word! I don't watch that crap thing. All right, Bronson Reed. Let's have, no, I don't even want to Google it. I don't care. That's how I don't like it. All right. All right. Listen, I don't want to make you mad. Uh, all right. So that's that. Uh, how have you been enjoying the tag league so far? Yeah, it's been good. I mean, I think it's I, <clears throat> the the highlights have been the double header at Core Auckland. And that always tends to happen on these tours where you get a little peak with the Core Auckland shows, mm. then a dip, and then it sort of peaks again towards the end of the tournament. And I suspect it's going to follow that trend. But I've been enjoying it. It's been the palate cleanser that I needed after I sort of got myself in a bit of a, a negative funk about the product, which, yeah. you know, maybe I was sort of unreasonably harsh in the sort of post G1 <coughs> doldrums that we usually get. But this has been a breath of fresh air. Um, you know, I will get on to talking about the actual junior tag teams themselves. But uh, there's been a lot of good stuff, even outside of the tournament that I've enjoyed. I've enjoyed the Ren and Shota Umino team. Mm. They're looking promising. The crowd are really getting into them. And I'm keeping a keen eye on Shota because he has been talking about wanting to wrestle John Moxley at Wrestle Kingdom. I don't know if that's going to happen. I still think that we're going to get the the least interesting option of Will Ospreay probably losing the US title to John Moxley at Wrestle Kingdom. I hate, I hate that with a passion of a thousand burning suns. But if they want to do the correct booking, that is to have show to beat Will Ospreay for the title, and then successfully defend it against John Moxley. Oh, yes, come on at, yeah. at Wrestle Kingdom. Right. Give me that. You know he's ready. Let's let's, let's go. What are we waiting for? So, uh, but as is always the case, the caveat for this is that a lot of the time in New Japan, it's guys just saying shit. But um, right. that to me, that's a match that would excite me. Shota versus Mox at Wrestle Kingdom, fuck yeah, sign me up for that. But uh, probably not going to happen. Yeah, I know, I know, and I guess that's that's one of the things that kind of gets under my skin at this point. The but yeah, what you laid out is a thousand times more exciting to me. The idea of Will, like Will, doesn't just have to lose at Wrestle Kingdom. You know what I mean? Like, Will could drop the belt before that in a fucking banger of a match. And then Shota can fucking defend that title against John Moxley. And, you know, I don't even think he has to win. What he has to do is he has to show sandpaper and grit and... And and Moxley's a great guy to do that with, right? Like, he doesn't have to win. Let me repeat that. He does not have to win. But what he does have to do is have a performance where the fans are just a thousand percent behind him. And he, he, and he gives it back in spades. You know what I mean? Like, he gives it back just as much as, as the fans are, are, are willing it. And then he loses, but he still has that that fire, and and he's established again, as I call it, the sandpaper. He doesn't have to go out there and pin John Moxley. It, that would be great. I would have no problem with that either. 
but he doesn't have to. So if there's a sticking point or this contention that Tony Khan has to have people winning on these shows, you can still satisfy that. Do exactly what you predict or or, or proposed, um, and everyone wins in the end. Everyone wins in the end. I, I, I but yet we're if if again nothing is set in stone. But if the direction is Will versus Moxley, I'm going to be dead serious. I don't care. I don't care because it means nothing to me. It means absolute. It doesn't. How does it help? It's an AW program. Okay, but that's that, yeah, that, that's me agreeing with you. Yeah. Like I, I'm done having Tony Khan offer matches at Wrestle Kingdom, which I don't think benefit New Japan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I look. We've done several shows about it, and we've beat it to death. Um, so we'll spare you guys the uh, the pain and the agony. But that's really what it boils down to. And I'll go so far as to say this. It is completely not needed. Wrestle Kingdom can be great with or without John Moxley. I don't, I don't know if anybody knows that. It can be. Um, and, it, and if we're bringing in John Moxley, if we're bringing him in, let's have it be something that means something to the company in its future. As opposed to winning a title and it going away and... You know, let's work on helping us, right? Let's work on helping us. Uh, some other little bits and pieces from the other card. Tai Chi still saying he's got unfinished business with Show over KPW and Kanemaru is still very cross with Kanemaru for that betrayal. Uh, still seeing lots of Callan Newman, who I think is improving week by week. Again, he's a guy that I would be curious to see if they can squeeze him into World Tag League somehow. I think that would be a really nice spot for him. Uh, I'm not sure if they've got him pegged as a, a junior or a heavyweight at this point, but he's definitely got the frame to be a, a heavyweight in the long-term future. Uh, Hiromu has picked up the DDT Ironman Heavy Metal Weight Championship, which is one of those 24-7 gimmick titles. So he's getting rolled up and inside cradled left, right, and center, uh, which don't know how I feel about that. I feel it's sort of detracting from him as being the junior champion, but I I don't expect it to interfere with um, major New Japan storylines too much. I think it's just a bit of fluff for the undercards. Yep. Um, speaking of undercards, we had a, a really great match with uh, Zack Sabre Jr. defending his TV title against uh, Oleg Bolton. I don't know if you had a chance to see this one, but Zack gave Oleg a lot there. It was a really interesting mix of styles. And Oleg Bolton is a guy who... Again, I'm really curious. Is he going to be sent on the typical excursion? You know, is he going to go abroad, or is he a guy that they're just going to be like, no, he's he's ready. Yeah. And suddenly, he's graduated and good to go. Um, he's he could probably do with a, a bit of polish, polishing. Still a bit rough around the edges, but there's definitely um, the potential there for him to be that monster that we've talked about. Yeah. The only thing that's lacking at the moment is his backstage promise. He's fluent in Japanese, which is great, but he's still doing the sort of typical, oh, you know, thank you to all the fans. I tried my best. I'm not quite there yet. So I think uh, if and when he graduates, that's got to stop. He's got to be just like go full on yeah. mental, just, you know, lean hard. I wanted to be basically like Zangia from Street Fighter 2. That is what I wanted. <laughs> I know that reference. Um, yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong. He is not like he's. It's not like he's 21. He's is he like 30? Uh, yeah. I think let's have a look up his age. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's uh, born 1993. <laughs> yeah, he's 30. Okay. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that he's an old man, mind you, but like we are, we you know, we're going to have to move a little quicker than 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 maybe we are normally and comfortable doing. Uh, but yeah, I think that's, that's got, like, if they do that right, he is a guy that can be, well, just like what we were talking about, um, be a bit of a fucking problem. That would be nice. That would be really nice. Um, I don't know if you're bringing this up, uh, later on, but, uh, on the, on the, uh, bouncing around the United States or whatever, you know, bouncing around the uh, pro wrestling to steal a bit from uh, the flog ship. Did you check out um, Will and 
Speedball, Mike Bailey. Uh, I didn't know it was any good. That was something I would I would say go out of your way to watch. In fact, maybe tomorrow morning you might want to just while well, kids are still asleep, you might want to just pop that on. It was very good, very good. Um, look, I've said it before. The 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 best relationship New Japan Pro Wrestling has is with Impact. <laughs> I swear to God, uh, that's a relationship I can I can get behind. Uh, and yeah, that no, but uh, uh, no joke. Get, go out of your way to watch. And and once again, it's it's great that he's that that Will is in there with dance partners that can fucking go. Pfft, Will Osprey, if he doesn't win Wrestler of the Year, it's a travesty. It's an absolute fucking travesty. Uh, and also, yes. Speaking of uh, Oleg, there were some really great sequences with him wrestling against Great Khan in uh, sort of opening stages of their multi-man tag matches. Yeah, uh, I would love to see that um, sort of pig back into a, an extended feud because they've got that sort of both of them the, the amateur background, which I thought was great, and I think there's a lot of potential there. Uh, Great Khan for his part, he has been uh, talking about challenging. Oh my god, this is the worst! Like. <laughs> You're doing good. You're doing good. Listen, you're doing good. You're f- you're you're I'm no selling it. I'm gonna keep going. Right. Yeah. Uh Greg Connor's been talking about defeating John Moxley and then challenging MJF for the AW title. Now this I think you can firmly file away under <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I I I, I look. Guys, guys just saying shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah just, I, just I, I'm not holding my breath for Great O'Con. Versus MJF for the AEW title. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Probably the sort of stuff MJF would like. I mean, he's doing sort of lowest common denominator, um, silly gimmicky comedy matches. I mean, I would say Yano is probably sort of more along the sort of in keeping with the MGS vision for what pro wrestling should be. But, right. you know, Okan is not too far on that, the same side of the spectrum. Can I ask you a question? What time is it over there? Uh, it is. 10 p.m. Okay. I've tried to put the boy to bed, like normal time. Esther asleep straight away. Arthur's just not having it today. I think it's just sort of the vibes from having the cat here. He's sure. just too excited by it. Oh, very excited. Yep. Yep. And the cat, I mean, I, the cat hasn't shut up yet. How are you going to sleep? <laughs> How are you going to sleep? How do you do it? How do you do it? Listen. Do you need a little vacation? I'll go to the upstairs. Listen, all, you to gotta, the pot. all you gotta do is just yes or no. Do you need do you need a little vac- vacation? You know a little holiday? Do you need to get away? What for the Yep. Yep. What, a literal holiday or podcast holiday? No, no, no. A, a literal. Do you need do you need um, do you need a little GoFundMe? Get a little side trip. No, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. No, okay. no wait, I'm on my half term break. I'm, I'm having a lovely week. Actually. All right, I'm just saying it's CC. I, this morning. I, I baked some uh poor patrol. Cupcakes Ooh. with Esther. That was a lot of fun. Even though I hate Paw Patrol, um, don't like what it what? symbolizes. What does it symbolize? But it's a dog, isn't it? It's, it's like they're police dogs, aren't they? And I just don't like the connotations of that. Oh, and the come on, agents. relax, will you please? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's a cartoon. Fair isn't enough. It? Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even let her watch it. It's just she, she has become aware of it mm. just from sort of cultural oh, experiences. So we look. did that. As, as, as the great blur would sing, you're taking the fun out of everything. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had a nice walk in the park. We had um, kids putting their Wellington boots on and splashing in muddy oh, puddles. That's nice. You know, these are the sort of things we didn't get to do in, in Bangkok. So yeah. um, uh, my mum came around, well, my parents came around. They made, she made some uh, lovely Jewish chicken soup with um, that sounds good. Nadler, lots of balls. Oh, that come really on. Good. I'm in on that. Can she cook? Can she can she put together a meal? Yeah. Oh. She still got it. She still got it. She still got it. I love that. That's a great line. She still got it. I love it. All right, good. Well, listen. Oh, no. Every time I'm eating her food. Listen, uh, it, there's a FedEx place, I'm sure, right near you, buddy. Just at any time you're ready. <laughs> just just whew, right over, uh, overnight. Um yeah, let's get into the Super Junior Tag All itself, right. which I have really been enjoying. And I think the Junior Tag Division has been, and this is not a hot take, I think plenty of people would agree with me, probably the best booked division in New Japan this yep. year. Yep. And just the strength and depth that they've got 
I don't want to say just for the junior division, for the junior tag division specifically, has been a real strength for New Japan this year. It's been, the, I think it's this, been the best thing. It's been the best thing in the yeah. company, John. Like, it's, it, it, it's, I don't know if anyone else has the creative say in that division, you know, kind of like Liger did back in the, you know, the early 90s. Um, and Shoshu would, you know, take care of the heavies. Um, I don't know if there's any dynamic like that, but if there is, somebody's doing something right. Because to me, it's been the most, it's been undoubtedly the most interesting, uh, consistent division in 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 the in, in the, the entire year, the entire year. Yeah, and I think this tournament is sort of a celebration of that, and I think everything has been. I think the the floor is high, and I said the ceiling's high as well. I think the two main events we got at the Coracon shows were really fantastic, and I am guilty often of setting the bar too high for certain matches. I'll look at on paper and imagine sort of the best iteration of that match. But those two matches, the um, War Dogs versus Catch 2-2, mm-hmm. and it was um, LIJ against Watto and Despi. I thought they were great, really fantastic matches. And um, yeah, it was the very much the palate cleanser that I needed for me to sort of appreciate that. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff going on in New Japan and the future's bright. You know, looking at the young talent here where we've got Fujita is only 21, Akira is 23. There's a few guys who are 26, so Kevin Knight and um, that Drill and Maloney. And who's the other guy who's 26? Uh, Watto, of course. Yeah, so I think there's a lot of really good young talent there mixing up with a good sort of blend of veterans. And there's no real dead weight in this tournament. I think everyone has justified their inclusion to some extent. Um, so, yeah, I mean, let's get into talking about some of the teams. So the current standings at the moment, we have House of Torture Show and Kanemaru with six points. They've been booked sort of pretty evenly where we've had um, Kanemaru picking up one four. Show's picked up two fours, but he also was on the receiving end of the one match that they lost. So they're being booked fairly evenly. Um, not been great. I mean, it's, it's House of Torture stuff. I'm not going to be um, banging the drum for it this time but they had some quite creative spots I enjoyed um, Kanemaru doing a sort of mid-air whiskey spray when Kevin Knight was doing some sort of flying move I can't remember what it was but that, I thought that was really creative and uh, of course we had Sho trying to counter Yo doing the whiskey spray on him uh, and Yo tried to spit the whiskey back into Sho's mouth and it looked like they were kissing <laughs> And that was really good as well. I like that because you know, at the heart of it, all feuds in New Japan Pro Wrestling are based on um, sort of homoeroticism. It really all is. they needed to that, the, uh, <laughs> all they needed to that the better. Correct me if I'm wrong, but sexually, isn't that known as a snowball? Is what they performed. <laughs> okay, I was not aware of that, but yeah, that sounds about right. Right? That's that. I got snowball vibes from, and if you, and if you know, you know. I'm just saying. All right, Google. It. Uh, we or also got the yeah, intergalactic. Jack Setters on six points, so Kashida and Kevin Knight. She's been good. She's been really solid. And Kevin Knight, man, I know we blow smoke up his ass every single time we talk about him, but he's just getting better and better. Like If you compare how he's wrestling now to how he was in Best in Super Juniors, where in Super Juniors you could really see those rough edges. You could see where the room for improvement was in his game. He is really tightening things up and is wrestling... Very crisply. I love, you know, my favourite word, crisp. But it is very crisp. It's very clean. So um, I just continue to be impressed by the the development of Kevin Knight. And this is a really fun team. Uh, They're really gelling nicely together. Kevin Knight, brilliant. Love him. He's good, isn't he? I'm afraid. I'm afraid, I don't. I don't want to say these things too loud. I because I agree with you, but I don't want it to be known because I want. It, I want him to fly under the radar and just. Kind of, I don't want the truck to pull up. Uh because well, guess what, man? I don't want to be surprised. I would not be surprised if that if uh, people are are getting the quill ready to to write the check, <laughs> like they do in seventeen oh four. Yeah, I know. Trust me. I, I wish we could put every Kevin Knight praise that we have and edit it and put it behind a paywall. 
because it sucks. It sucks. It sucks because as much as I enjoy him, I, I just I think and look, and look, you know what? Get get the fucking bag, dude. You know what are you gonna do? I can't believe a fifty year old man just said get the fucking bag, but uh, yeah, look, get the money. You know, and I think two thousand and twenty four, he gets the money. Let's put it that way. We also got the War Dogs. I suppose no, there shouldn't be War Dogs. They should be the junior version of the War Dogs. Uh, so but we, we were we were workshopping this on the Discord battle battle pups. <laughs> Let's call them the battle pups. Right. So the uh, the Arthur, come on, man! It's ten p.m. Go to sleep. Arthur. Jeez, uh, they're on six Arthur. points as well. And again, I've just I can't say enough good things about these guys. They're so fun to watch. Like their control periods are really fun. Yeah. Clark Connors is improving a lot, but Drilla Maloney, yeah. like it's like a different yeah. man to the one we saw yeah. wrestling at the start of Best of the Super Juniors. And maybe that was by design. You know, he was trying to do the United Empire thing and now he's he's really coming to his own wrestling this sort of heel bully bullet club star and it just fits like a glove for him. And he just he he just owns the ring. As soon as he steps out, not even the ring, the arena. He just he looks like he belongs there, just the confidence he's exuding, the the way he wrestles as well, just like absolute powerhouse, just brilliant people ragged on in them. The, the the driller killer move has become one of my favorite moves in New Japan at the moment. The the creativity of the spots they come up with, just tremendous. Um they, you know, I worried when they took the belts off catch two too, but now with Connors and Maloney, they look like they've been wrestling together for Years, but it's you know it's been a matter of months. I just I love these guys. They're so fun to watch. I, I agree with everything you said. Um, I, I will say this though: it's, I am laughing my ass off because it sounds like you're all locked into one bathroom. <laughs> and it's the, the greatest thing is Mally like, sitting next to you, just being like Arthur, shut up, go to bed. I know this. This is, might be the most absurd audio I've ever done in the history of the podcast. We've had sort of individual runs before, right? We've had we've had singular cat runners. Right. There's some times where there's been two cat runners. Right. There have been child runners. There have been wife runners. But we've not had all three at the same time. I mean, there's this is like a fucking house to watch a lumberjack match. Like, there's no concept that we're having us doing a show at all. There is absolutely no like. <laughs> Like this is not. Oh, it's so funny! Oh, it kills me. You put... This is arguably worse than the audio we <laughs> produced last night. I don't. Know. And I didn't think that was possible. I still have it. We can, I can always throw that one up. I think I actually do. I do. It's like um, it's like in limbo right now. It's like it hasn't been saved, but I, I think it's all still there. So I will be yeah. definitely have to delete that. But yeah. yes, um, yes. The point being, um, I agree with everyone. Your points. I, I just, my head, which I just cannot get over what I was hearing uh, with uh, everything around me. So a little distracted by that, but nonetheless, I would agree with you a thousand percent. Uh, we also got El Desperado and Master Watto on six points. And um, I was just howling at the entrance that they did where Watto's coming out to his music and just Despy refuses to come out. Watto's got a custom printed t-shirt with him and Despy on the front. And then he sort of dragging Despy out from backstage and Despy said, no, cut the music. I want to come out by myself to my music. And he's refusing to wear the t-shirt. I thought, oh, this is hilarious. This is great. But then I realized this is just basically like the bro chat show story. Like, this is yeah. this is the MJF Adam Cole thing just being run through it in New Japan. Lens, and I, I felt a bit dirty uh, enjoying it. But um, they don't do it very often. And and I just, I've, I'm just i just loving the dynamics between these two with El Desperado. Still, he, he still sort of, does he hate Watto? I don't know. He's sort of building up a grudging respect for him. And Watto just really almost sort of changing the way he's working. Like, I think he is leaning into his goofiness okay. but doing it in a way where he's really owning it and just be- seeming a lot more confident like and... self-deprecating humor maybe ish yeah okay but also I, I mean i was discussing this with jay michael and he said that he he knows watto's doing different un like things like he, he thinks he's seen a bit scrappier with examples that he gave like Watto coming in and attacking Musashi from behind in a sort of Suzuki-gun-esque 
manner, not allowing Bushi a clean rope break. Um, he, as he called it, a cheeky feistiness, maybe sort of hmm. absorbing that, uh, you know, the, de- the Despy style. So, yeah, I, I think this is a lot of fun. I think we're sort of day by day, match by match, seeing that synergy improve and them sort of taking on things that Weto suggested, like the spine buster into the Sutenkaku German suplex. So they've also been featured in most of the main events of this tour. And I don't know if they necessarily need to win this tournament, but I think they'd be a really great option to go on and challenge for Wrestle Kingdom. Mm. It's hard to pick between them and Catch 2-2 at the moment, but I would definitely expect them to be in the mix together. And I don't know what the end game is. Like, is it better to have these guys winning tag league, junior tag league and then winning the junior tag titles? Or is there going to be some sort of breakdown at some point and they start feuding again and like, I don't know, the winner faces Hiromu at Wrestle Kingdom or something? What, what do you think would be a fitting end game? You know, I like the idea of them not getting along and it, it leading to them having a match where it, 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 and I, I know I know I've mentioned it before, uh, and I've mentioned it earlier on on this particular show that sandpaper and grit and like what who better opponent right <laughs> than than a guy who for fun you know will show up on a fucking freedom show and 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 uh, get hacked to death. So yeah, I mean, I that might be like the missing element and maybe we're getting little tastes of it and maybe we're getting little little snippets of it but there's a lot of guys you can go down that roster that i feel could benefit from something like that like honestly all of those guys that that feel like they're all lumped in that one kind of pot and and trust me in that same pot is are are guys that probably don't deserve it because you know we're 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 building for better things and better days with them leading the charge, but I, that that's an element that is has been missing from a lot of guys' games, whether it be Wato, whether it be Yo, whether it be uh, whom you know, like that's that's something that's that's desperately needed for a lot of these guys to evolve. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 all for a breakup. I'm all for awkward matches where, you know, why am I even with this fucking jabron? I can't believe I said jabron, but I said jabron. Um, uh, you know, you get my point, but the end result being, okay, he's been touched by the gritty hands of of sandpapery El Desperado. I'm all, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. One thing I forgot to mention, uh, the cat's just done a, a wee on the bed, so we've got what? Drama. What? Um, oh yeah. my god! This is not this is not a good scenario. Are you okay? Um, Are you all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just uh, the. Uh, you need a code no, word. You need a buzzword. No, no, no. no. This is power, power on three. I'll get you. Uh, I'll get you out of there. I'll get you out of there now. They, uh, Bullet Club are getting a new junior. Oh. I think he's mentioned something about that in the backstage comments. So maybe, like, they don't seem to have a, a single junior guy. Well, there's Ishimori, I suppose, which raises questions about w- what his role is in Bullet Club going for. But, um, yeah, I want to keep an eye on that. He, this is something that Driller has been teasing. Um, okay, next team in the lineups is Yo and Musashi. They're on four points. They've been pretty good. Um, yeah, the the synergy was a bit off in the first couple of matches. I don't know if they were sort of doing that deliberately, but they're starting to click a bit more now. Um, Yo is surprisingly charismatic. I know we've sort of poked fun at him in the past for being boring, but uh, he's definitely shown more vibes to him. Do. I don't know, Manny. You figure it out. Um, <laughs> where, you know, stuff like he has been mocking the uh, Despi and Wato thing with he, he made his own t-shirts of him and Masashi coming out and wearing them and they're doing the sort of tribute spots together yeah Michinoku Pro stuff which uh, has been fun to watch um you know not like the world on fire but pretty sort of pretty solid uh mid-card team in this tournament any any strong thoughts on them uh I mean look I think everyone likes the idea of fresh fresh 
faces and fresh blood in a tournament. I, I'm one of them. Um, but I think, you know, two nights, but three nights, it, it, I don't, I don't think we have a, a decent amount of data yet <laughs> to say, okay, are we, are we making a commitment here or is it just like a one-time splashy thing or, or what have you? Um, I think probably the latter. I mean, there've been other instances where I have speculated that, you know, like with El Lindemann, oh, maybe, you know, they're going to sign this guy, but it's not, I think this is just sort of the rising tide lifting all ships kind of thing that New Japan are doing at the moment. So I wouldn't look look at this as a long Is that the end game, do you think? Is that just like a, a, a thing where it's like, okay, we're going to put you on these shows, get you a little bit more exposure so that when you go back to your home promotion, you're the guy who worked on New Japan shows. Like, is that a yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. It's like Kiyomiya being in the G1. I think this is just something that they have decided is mutually beneficial for everyone. Okay. All right, listen. I mean, I'm not... I'm not shitting on it. I'm just saying, okay, I guess, look, maybe maybe things in pro wrestling don't necessarily have to have an end game. It's just a thing, right? Okay, fine. Uh, we've also got Taguchi and DKC on four points. I mean, Taguchi's doing the bum stuff, but there have been some pretty good wrestling sequences. I mean, I think he's not been stinking it up as he often does during tournaments like this. Um, DKC has been a, a controversial person. I mean, I'm quite keen on him. There's this kind of sort of karate kid goofiness, cheesiness that I find quite endearing. And I think the Japanese fans are taking to him, but I may be on an island with that. I think by and large, there seems to be uh, a lot of <laughs> scorn for the DKC and, and people feeling that you know he shouldn't be in spots like this. But Why? Uh, Why? I've quite is enjoyed it, is it, is a, um, is right. his political it's, thoughts? Is that what it is? No, 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 not that no. at all. They just think that he's, just, you know, not at the level of the other LA Dojo guys. I mean, if you compare it to the likes of Clark Connors and, and Kevin Knight, yeah, maybe he's not at that level. But I think there is something there. I mean, I'm not saying this guy is going to be a future junior champion, but I, I'm, I'm seeing value there, personally. Yeah, I mean, look, Taguchi's going to do his thing. The guy's fucking 45 years old. I mean, what, you know, what do you want? Uh, let him do his ass play gimmicks and all that dumb shit. Um, when, if he's called upon, I mean, he can, he has a good match still in him. Um, I don't have a problem with them. I mean, I don't expect them to be in the mix. Uh, if they are, I would be shocked and disappointed given the amount of talent that's in that tournament. But, um, you know, uh, to me, we kind of need a, I don't know, I want to say like a, like teams got to lose, right? We need teams to fucking lose. And I think they're a perfect example of a team that's perfectly fine. And in, in losing, nobody's going to lose any sleep. Uh, and in the, but in the same breath, they're, they're more than capable of having decent matches. So yeah, they're there, you know, they're, uh, they're a side salad, if you will. And we've also got catch 2-2. Former champions, TJP and Francesco Acura, four points, so two wins and two losses. So they seem to be sort of running this story of TJP having a neck injury and that costing them. And this is sort of classic New Japan tournament booking where some early favourites start off on a losing run and then turn it around and make a, a late surge to get into the finals. And I suspect that's what we're doing here. But they're still fantastic. They're still one of the best teams in a, a very high-quality division. And I would expect them. Like, I would be surprised if they're not in the final. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I. Uh, I actually have been giving them strong consideration for my tag team of the year. Am I out of my mind? Uh, there's not really that many outstanding candidates for that in New Japan, are there? Because in terms of the heavyweight stuff, I mean, Bishamon were having a great year but now with Goto's injury that sort of raising question marks about that but no I, I think you are probably not on an island with that one I, I think a lot of people would agree with you yeah I mean right now I'm, I mean I'm leaning there I really can't think of off the top of my head right now like what what would I go never six man <laughs> you know what I do Okada yeah no, they have been fantastic that right. Okada Ishii Tanahashi team and I think the uh, the battle pups as well mm -hmm. even though it's been the, the latter half of the year I think they've been so good that they deserve to be in the conversation right 
Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if if I'm doing tag team of the year voting right now, I'm probably looking in that mix that we just talked about. So, yeah, they're good. Um, again, my my biggest fear is is that, and again, not fear, but you know, you're losing to move up. You know, you're losing to do more good, fun things pro- for the promotion. Um, yeah, I would not be surprised if they are in the finals. They should be. I, I think in a in a division that is uh full of talent like you know they got to they, they got to be up at the high end of the list of 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 this is the cream of the crop so yeah uh, uh look finals are bust right finals are bust update arthur is has got Maddie's phone and is taking a video of oh, the cat there you go <laughs> And he's taking videos of me. Ah, he knows how to work it. Uh, he seems to have, like he's not actually recording. Okay, he's activated the camera function. Got you. So he, he, yeah, he's got someone. He's not even two years old yet. This is scary. Yeah. Um, okay. Next scene, <laughs> we've got Lij Team Bushi and Titan who have one win, so they've got two points uh, and three losses. So they're the sort of team that can just sort of fade into the background, but when they get the tap on the shoulder. They absolutely kill it. So the match that they had with Desperado Watto, with all those sort of relationships going into that match, um, it was just fucking tremendous. And Titan, he's got such a high ceiling. Like, here's a guy who I think is more than likely going to be in most people's top three for match of the year with that Super Juniors final against Watto. And they rekindled a bit of that magic here. And the Titan Despi sequences were really great as well. And even Bushi, you know, he has one very good match every year, and this was it. So I think they're probably done. I mean, I'm not going to be holding my breath for more brilliance from them in the tournament, but if this is their one good match in the tournament, it was a a hell of a match. Mm. Uh, I don't expect them to be in contention, but, you know, T-Town is so good. Maybe they should be. Maybe they should be, Damon. I don't know. It's a tough situation because it, you're right. What, what, Spice it would deliver to the juniors if Teton were to kind of stick around for a little bit, right? Um, you know, some of the some of the most interesting and fun times were, you know, Dragon Elite chasing a title. Um, I, why why can't we somewhat replicate that feeling again? Um, but it's hard. You know, I, you, I mean, who knows? But I, I, if if all things being equal, and we have some checks that we can write, boy, that would be one of them. I, I, I would, I would, I would absolutely love to commit to to Teton, and just let's let's have some fun with it. You know, let's 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 have a nice challenge, and even possibly, you know, give him a junior title. Now, again, I understand that we are. In the in the middle of a Hiromu streak, but yeah, he's a guy that just I don't know. I mean, is his value really in being brought in in special occasions, or like could could New Japan really value from a guy like that? And I I, I think the latter. I really do. The best thing I can say about T-Town is that he is making me not miss. Dragon Lee anymore. So. Right. Great. Yes. That is high praise. You know, uh, okay. We've also got the TMDK team of Robbie Eagles and Kosei Fujita, also on two points. And Eagles, I mean, we, we know how good Eagles is and he always lives up to those high uh, benchmarks. But Kosei Fujita has just walked in after, what, like a two-month excursion. I don't <laughs> know if his excursion is done, but he just... He looks the part already, doesn't he? He's yeah. got his sort of punk haircut with his little beard and his earring. And the wrestling quality is just on point. I mean, the, it was interesting that they had him in the first few matches work in extended sequences with veterans, guys like TJP and Taguchi. The, the Taguchi sequence they had was really fantastic. Um, Takamichi Noku as well, their back and forth was really good. So I don't know if that was deliberate to have him working against these more tenured wrestlers. But am I crazy for saying I, I, I'm getting future world champ vibes from Ooh. him already. You know, lest we forget that, as I said before, he's 21. Yeah. And he's just, he's just got that aura 
about him. I do too. And I, and I, I will say this, like there is a lot that, that centers around the usual suspects. when we talk about, okay, who's the future of this promotion? Like, I, I think he slips under the radar big time. Um, and you're right at 21. We're talking about here. We're talking about a guy at 21. Who's not, he, he still has growing to do for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? Like, like, like there's, there's, there's nothing but good things on the future with him. He could put on size. He's going to grow a couple inches. Uh, he's only going to get better as a, a pro wrestler and more seasoned and more mature. And yeah, yeah. And, and and here's the thing too, what's what what you what you mentioned is that he's already got a lot of those check boxes hit. That's a, that is a like listen. I I know people thought the last show that we did was like the fucking show of doom, um, and we're ready to turn in our uh, non official New Japan Pro Wrestling fan club membership cards, but. Uh, Did you the, get that from Esteban? <laughs> Have I heard from him? Um, no, official, unofficial fan well, club well, membership. Well, that's, what I, that's what I mentioned. That's what I mentioned. <laughs> um, the I don't know if that's still a thing anymore. Um, like I know he's got he does some stuff for for them promotion wise. Um, the. Uh, my point was, is that Fujita is great. And if, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Good night. Concur. I agree. Uh, right. What else? We've got, uh, one more team to talk about, which is the just five guys team, Doki and Taka Michinoku, who have zero points, which is a shame. You know, I, I sort of high hopes with Doki, but, um, looks like they're going to be the team that starts off shit, but they'll probably go on a little run yeah. and everyone will enjoy that. Uh, Taka, I said, like, I think he's a guy. <laughs> he is evergreen, right? I don't think if I sort of compared him wrestling here to him, you know, the last tournament he was wrestling in, like last best of the Super Juniors he was in, I couldn't sort of noticeably say that. Yeah, this guy's slowing down, even though he's recently celebrated his fiftieth birthday. Um, it's just he. I think he doesn't get the chance to showcase how good at wrestling he is, and obviously, you know, he had all the the personal stuff and all the, the, the naughty business that he was doing. Mm. But with all that being said, I just, I still enjoy watching him wrestle and, you know, thinking back to how, you know, how long ago was it? We were watching him wrestle in WWF. That was what sort of late nineties. Yeah. And he's still doing it now. Like, yeah, it's nearly 30 years later. That's insane. It is. It is. And it's, and it's um, like, even some of the dangerous shit that he would do in the beginning of his career, maybe not so much now, but yeah, I mean, considering the fucking crazy shit they, they were doing in, well, was he, he was in Michinuka pro and he was in, wasn't he in that universal one? Um, he was in a lot. Not like he was doing, he was, it was weird because he was doing like high flyy stuff yet, Incredibly physical, incorporated in in, the, in in their matches. Um, so yeah, it is amazing. I don't. I, he must have a good fucking doctor and chiropractor because yeah, it's amazing that he's still. I, I, again, we're not saying going strong, but the fact that he's able to fucking get in a ring and do what he does and ended at that is is to me is pretty remarkable. All right, well that's our Super Junior Tag League. I am thoroughly enjoying it. Looking forward to seeing more of it and. Hey, you, if you keep an eye on uh, New Japan World, you will be able to enjoy the commentary of Walker Stewart, hey. who's adding English commentary in post for some of these shows that have only been broadcast live in Japanese. So yep. definitely looking forward to that. Slowly but um, surely, they're weaning us off the Kevin Kelly teat, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which which I know it's delicious. Uh, look, um I think I think that's probably a smart move. Let's let's 
you know, let's let's ease Walker in, get people used to him, get used to the voice, get used to his calls, get used to all that. And uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty smart move. And correct me if I'm wrong, this weekend is his debut, right? Uh, yes, I think you're right. That will be the Vegas show. For correct. Unleashed. Yeah. Yeah. I was having a little chat. I was having a little chit chat um, with him. And uh, he's excited. He's ready to go. He's ready to go. Guess who his uh, broadcast partner is? Uh, is it you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, God, please. They would not want that. I'll tell you what. But if you want to. If you want to give me a call there, Red Nuge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm apparently I'm apparently have a lot of free time on my hands, if you don't know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Damon on the dole. Uh yeah. Um, um yeah, it is who did he say it was? He told me who it was. Should I say who it is or leave it a surprise? Uh I say who it is. I'm interested. Are oh, you interested? You're going to guess or are you just going to fucking leave me hanging? Is it Chris Hamza? You are absolutely wrong. Oh. It's not Chris. Which I think, um, I would, yeah. you know what? Give him a fucking try. You know, I would love it. I, I think Chris might be. It would be perfect, wouldn't they? They would be like sort of the next generation. Yeah. Kevin and Chris. And here's the thing. Fucking, I love uh, Chris so much. He's such a good guy. Um, I spent 15 minutes. On a, on a podcast that will never air, talking about how much I love Chris and I let him down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I felt so bad. Uh, no, how about that? No other guesses? Any other guess? Um, I think you might be. I, I think you might be surprised, and I think uh, you might be. Hmm. It's. It might not be who you expect. Okay. Can I have a clue? Uh, yes. Uh, Walker's broadcast partner has a vagina. <laughs> okay. Um, it is Kevin Kelly. No, I'm kidding. Stop, please. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. How about that Veda Scott? Veda Scott. Yes, I was, that was on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. Working. But I was getting mixed up with Zayda Zhang. Right. My Zaydas and my Vedas. Yeah. I mean, it's confusing. I get it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if this is the official first. Well, she did stuff for, in the Philly shows with Ian, and um, I thought there was a third mic there as well. I could be wrong. But yeah, um, it feels like uh, she's getting more and more work on these, um, at, le- at the very least, U.S. shows. Uh, yeah, I mean, good for her. I mean, fine. Little- Here's the thing. The hardest thing is finding a way to stay in the mix uh, and find and finding new opportunities when you, you might already be, you know, it, it might feel like you got one foot on the banana peel and the other one going out the fucking door when it comes to maybe like a wrestling career or a managerial career or, or something along those lines. So to be able to find a groove, uh, be good, improve, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then, you know, kind of getting the trust at least of others to 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 do commentating. I think that's good. I think it's good. Listen, hey, uh, look here. Uh, here's here's what it is, and here's where I am a little bit nervous. If if I'm being truthful, it's two people that, um, while it's my understanding they have worked together in the past, um, like it's we're we're debuting. Both, you know, so, so like, like I, it's not that I'm going to sit here and give them a fucking pass, but know that in my head, I know that that's going to be an uphill climb because both of them are sitting at a desk that they've never sat at before for, for a company, for this company. Like, obviously they've done, they've done color and, 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 and play by play for other promotions. But again, they're both being debuted sort of kind of it at the same time. So, you know, you like, I'm sure that they are trying to get their chops in, you know, okay. You know, to know when to bounce off each other. But, um, I, you know, I, I think I have to grade them on a curve if I'm doing any grading whatsoever. Uh, 
just for that fact. It feels it feels like they have a lot against them. So so if they knock the ball out of the park, which I hope they do, uh, I think that I, I might have to give them a little extra credit given the circumstances. Not going to lie. Uh, while we've been talking, actually, news has popped up on the Wrestling Observer that Osprey is expected to sign with AEW when his NJPW deal expires, which is it's not really news, is it? I mean, it's pretty much what we expected, right? Who? I'm sorry, I I, I was distracted. Who's who? Who are we talking about? Osprey, yep. expected to sign with AEW yes. when his New Japan deal expires. Yeah, no, I mean that's the the uh, as as of what. 27th at 541 here on the East Coast. Uh, uh, there's been no indication that anything has changed from that. Let's put it that way. Um, that's that's all we know at this point. So if that does happen, uh, it's not like we haven't been forewarned. If it doesn't happen, uh, great. Bonus. Fantastic. You know, we all got worked. Woohoo! Yay! What did he do? Uh, and he stays around. So I'm hoping I'm hoping for the latter. I want to be wrong. I'm going to be so fucking wrong. I want to be so wrong that uh, I will walk around with a scarlet L, if you will. Uh, I got no problem with that. None. None. Uh, but all signs point the other way. All right. Well, let's uh, preview the Saturday show. All right which uh, is uh, in Las Vegas in Sam's Town Live, Dump. Fighting Spirit Unleashed. So we have a kickoff match. One, a strong survivor match produced by the NJPW Academy. So I think this is the guys who have been training under Rocky. So we've got Matt Vandergriff against Buck Skinner. And another kickoff match where we have the Team Filthy Boys back in action. Danny Limelight, Royce Isaacs and Jarrell Nelson against Balian Aki, Titus Alexander and Jacob Austin Young. Uh, big fan of Jacob. Looking forward to seeing him wrestling again and yeah good to see west coast wrecking crew uh getting back on a new japan show i would really love for them to be in world tag league but it seems like the company may be not as high on them as, as i am which yeah. is a shame but uh, there you go then into the main cards we have a strong openweight championship number one contenders four-way match so we've got satoshi kojima fred rosser jeff cobb and alex coglin so winner of this will go on to face the winner of the eddie kingston Henare match. Um, so it was quite hard to call, actually. Yeah. Um, Can I, I ask- say Jeff Cobb and Fred Ross are probably looking... Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask, why... I mean, I, I love them. Don't get me wrong. Why is K- Kojima always on these random US shows? Like, does he have property here? He's got a little side, <laughs> he's got a little side chick in the state. Like, what's going on here? Like, he's always Edge on... there for the bread, I don't know. Right. Well, that's probably it. We are uh, a carbohydrated nation. Uh, yeah, it's just he's always there. He's always willing to take that fucking flight. Like, there's got to be another reason. There's got to be another reason. He likes, uh, I don't know. Like, what do you think that is? I don't know. I don't know. But he's now that you've mentioned, I I could see that being. Uh, if, has he wrestled Eddie Kingston yet? I could be. He, I think so I in Washington. Eddie Kingston oh, versus Kojima oh. having a singles match if they've not already had one. I thought they did. I, I'm almost certain they did. I thought I think they had. It wasn't it on like AEW television? They had a match, didn't they? Am I wrong? Who gives a shit? Um, yeah, but he's always on these shows. It's weird. I just it's a weird fucking thing. And again, uh, look, you go down that fucking match. Uh, you might as well call it the match of guys that are deserving but can't get a fucking break in New Japan Pro Wrestling. <laughs> right? It's just unbelievable. I, I look. I don't know. I don't. I whatever. I, I I'm just gonna. We we know the song and dance, right? We know the song and dance. Yeah, I'd be happy with any of those guys. Actually, I mean, Alex Coglin probably the most interesting option, but um, unlikely. Uh, if I had to pick a winner again, yeah, it will largely depend on who wins. Up, no, there's no way Eddie Kingston's not retaining. So, uh, yeah, Kojima. I think Kingston versus Kojima is probably a. A nice little Tony Khan offer match that everyone will go, oh, yeah, look at Eddie Kingston getting to wrestle his heroes. Isn't it great? Like some kind of kid who's won a competition. Yay. Getting a bit tired of that, personally. Yeah. Um, anyway, next match, tag team match, we've got Johnny, Robbie, and Luvia against 
Zuxis and Stephanie stop. Vaquer. Stop. So, stop. <laughs> Right. Stephanie Vaquer was really good last time, so looking forward to seeing her. Okay. Uh, we got singles match: Tom Lawler against Gabe Kidd. That should be really good. Looking forward to that. That should be great. And here's the thing: I'm hand waving it because the company hand waves it. Let, let that be known. The reason I, I I gave you the old fucking eye roll hand wave is because the company does that. The company. If the company thought it was important, they I would be interested. I would be invested. But that's not fucking happening, is it? Is it? Uh, okay, we have a Atlantis 40th anniversary match. Oh, sure. What Atlantis an appropriate Union. place for this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was hoping that we could celebrate Atlantis's 40th anniversary, I was hoping and praying that somehow we could find a way to do it in fucking Sam's Town, the shittiest casino in all of Las Vegas. Let's do it there. Perfect. And I'm sure Atlantis is. Chef kissing. Can't wait for the accolade to, to bestow him at Sam's Town, of all places. Jesus fucking Christ. Might as well do it as Sam's Club. Did I say Sam's yeah. Club or Sam's Town? No, I was making a joke and saying they should do it at Sam's Club. There'd probably be more people there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Zing. Uh, okay, as yes, you've got Atlantis Jr., Mystico, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and Atlantis against Adrian Quest, Tiger Mask, Soberano Jr., Rocky Mario. Looks like a dog's dinner on paper, but I think this one will be really fun. Me too. That's one a lot of people come away from thinking, well, that was a good good time. Yeah. I mean, I'm not shitting on the match itself. I think it's such a it's such a hodgepodge of, of pro wrestlers that it has no other choice but to be good. Uh or a complete clusterfuck. Uh but I just I giggle at the idea of this. We're celebrating Atlantis. <laughs> What is the why are we doing that, Sarah? Oh Lord, it's so good. Oh, what am I doing? What am what am I doing? All right, yeah, I'm sorry. What are we doing? Um, then we got the singles match with now. This is for the title, isn't it? Julia against Hian. Hian. Uh, it's not labeled as such on the website, but she is the. Which of the women's titles has she got? I don't know which one it is. Is it the, is it the IWGP Women's or the Strong? women's title one of those mm. she's got one of those i'm sorry it's confusing keeping up with them do you know which one it is? i don't even think she knows to be honest with you they're just gonna hand <laughs> she, I, she's like i have no fucking idea <laughs> like uh, uh she's the strong women's champion okay so yeah she'll be defending the strong women's championship it'd be nice if they put that on the website against hian don't know who she is never heard of her but i'm sure it'll be good julia's good i'm sure it'll be nice yeah uh, and, and a fun time for everyone um then we have a tag match with hikaleo and el fantasmo Defending their strong tag titles. Again, not listed on the website, but I know they will be defending their strong tag titles against the Monster Source team of Alex Zane and Lance Archer. So this is an interesting one. We did have a question, actually, from uh, our friend John. Oh, who yeah. I closed the tab. But uh, I know he was asking. He's a big Lance Archer fan. Sure is. Uh, I'm going to find it. It was saying that asking about the Monster Source team, what is the likelihood of Archer Zane, aka Monster Source, becoming a real thing? So... I suppose, I mean, if they win these strong open weight titles, then that maybe would make it more likely for them to be a long term thing. I I could see them getting booked for World Tag League. I mean, Archer is a guy that they love bringing over. He was in. I last like him. Year, I, I like Lance Archer. Season. And Alex Zane was really good when he was over for the Best of the Super Juniors last year. So, um, yeah, I think it would be a smart move to um, bring the Monster Source team over for World Tag League. I don't think they're going to beat Hikolo and ELP, but um, regardless, I think they would be a, a, a neat addition to Tag League. Yeah. You know, I, we were talking about earlier in the show, we were talking about monsters and stuff. Yeah, I thought he was. I thought he played that role pretty, pretty well, pretty darn good. Um, yeah, I feel bad for the fucking kids at ringside, though. That's for sure. <laughs> Um, do, is, is he allowed to spell them yeah, anymore? I hope so. Uh, I uh, I don't I don't see. I don't I don't I, look. I don't maybe, but I don't see them being a uh, a full time thing. I, I, I would have no problem with them being a full time thing, but I I just I don't I don't see it happening. Just don't don't see that. And then we got the strong open weight championship. Eddie Kingston defending against Henry. And I feel like, you know, the the quality of these Hanare singles matches depends on 
how much his opponent is willing to give because we've seen matches against guys like Shingo and Ishii and even Mikey Nichols, guys who are willing to sort of play into that style and have a you know proper banger that these matches are spectacular. But I don't know if Eddie Kingston is going to do that. And I am my suspicion is that Eddie Kingston is just going to be like, ah, oh, come on, let's just get in and out, 10 minutes. Don't want to get hurt, otherwise Tony's going to get pissed off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't think he will do all the cool shit that Henry usually likes to do in his matches. So I'm a little bit sceptical on this one. And uh, yeah, zero chance that Henry wins. He should win. I think it'd be much more interesting if he did win, but this is the, the uh, AEW partnership. Yay. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, I wonder, uh, I, I will say this, and I'm going to leave it at, at this. I'm not going to allow for further speculation on my own part or anyone else's part. I wonder if we see um, an instance where uh, uh, professionalism doesn't necessarily keep strong in this match. <laughs> you, think maybe- you mean that Hedora's hatred of... <laughs> America and all things American. Yes. just gonna fly over. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of what I'm alluding to. But let's see, right? Let's see what happens, right? All right. If you're in attendance, just start a USA USA chant, just to really rile up yeah. an RA. Yeah, then, then we might actually see some good shit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, that would be. Yeah, let's let's put, let's put Hanare in a little bit of a bad mood, shall we? <laughs> let's get him going. See what happens. Let's just see what happens. Wouldn't that be all right? It would be completely unprofessional, but talk about interesting, wouldn't it? I mean, talk about getting people talking. Woo. <laughs> just saying. Go into business for yourself. Just beat the shit out of him. <laughs> just go just go into business. Listen, hey, listen, Akira Maeda made a fucking fortune off of doing that, right? I'm just saying. Just fucking saying. Uh, you know, I don't want anybody uh, to take liberties with anyone else, but you know, listen. I do. I'm fully advocating. <laughs> hey, really? I'm you're you're good at okay. All. Yeah. all right, we're gonna we're gonna have every, I'm just saying, Akira Mangita made a made a pretty good made a pretty good career out of doing something like that. But all right, let's go. Let's see what happens. Uh, then we have a Sopesho tag match with uh, Yu Uemura and Sanada against Hiromu and Tetsuya Naito, which. Should yeah. be good. Should be fun. I like that. There's not a huge amount to say about it. Hopefully, we get to see some excitement between Sonata and Naito to try and eject a bit of uh, you think so energy and, and uh, uh, urgency and passion. Yeah, into, yeah. Into build for us people. You think there's any chance of that emanating from Sam's Town in Las Vegas <laughs> <laughs> in front of 200 people? Yeah, probably not. Probably not. All right. Uh, what else I got on this uh, seller card? Uh, their main event is the Never Open Weight Championship. Tamatonga defending against Shingo Takagi. So it's an interesting one. I mean, I think if... I always find that the Tamatonga singles matches tend to be diminishing returns the longer they go on for. So if this is sort of dragged out to be like a 30-minute 30 30 minute yeah. thing, then, yeah, it's, it's going to stink. But if it is kept to the Shingo match, mm-hmm. then it could be good. I mean, their match in the G1 was all right, wasn't it? I think they were sort of teasing a... Were they teasing a time limit draw? Oh, no, they did go to a time limit draw, didn't they? I think. Um, so I can't even remember. I don't remember much about that match at all. Um, the dynamics could be interesting here because, I mean, I suppose Tamatonga is... Yeah, he, he's meant to be the babyface here, but I feel that the fans are going to be cheering for Shingo. I think... I um, Yeah, I mean... I mean, I mean, it might go both ways, but I think I just think Shingo has that. Uh, like the people who are buying tickets, uh, the, the 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 biggest thing that you would have would have had would have been okay. He's coming out in a bullet club t shirt, so I'm going to fucking cheer. Uh, the people that are in that building, I don't know. I kind of feel like they are in in a Shingo camp, and I could be I could be dead wrong. We'll find out in just a few hours, mind you. But yeah, I, I kind of think that that's that's who's here. Uh, but once again, we're we we're, we're given uh, we're giving him the keys a little bit. Main eventing, uh, it's a it's a show that he's main eventing. Um, so it's not like 
ample opportunities haven't been provided. So I'm, I'm optimistic. I, I'm, I'm hoping for a, a good match, great match. I'm hoping for, do I think I'm going to get a great one? Uh, probably not. Do I think I'm going to get a good one? I think, uh, I think it's a safe bet. I think it's a safe bet. We're going to get a good match main event. But you're right. If this goes past the 20-minute mark, I think it's going to lose a lot of steam quickly. So short and sweet, and then uh, make it hard-hitting. That would be nice. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Well, it's a call to winner, though, isn't it? I mean, I don't see a clear Wrestle Kingdom program for either of these guys because I, f- I thought it was going to be Finlay against ELP for the Never title, but then Finlay dropped it. Right. And I thought that Shingo and Suji might be in line for a World Tag League win. Uh, so I could be dead wrong, I but I don't think, match. yeah, I don't think this match will have any Wrestle Kingdom ramifications. Zero. So, do you think Tamatonga retains? Yeah, then? I do. I mean, I think he should, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, what are you going to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that's it. I think I should probably. It's quiet. Go. Now. now Now it's quiet. You're going to wrap up the fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in bed? Well, Did they fall asleep yet? Uh, no, Arthur's still away, wow. but my dad has taken him away because he's. I don't know what he's gotten into him today. He's just you pull a pep in them. Yeah, all right, that's good. Absolutely buzzing. All right, well, listen, uh, let's wrap it up. What do you say? Then uh, I think I'm going to get. I guess yeah, go there are there. a lot of questions. Twitter. Are there, questions. Can we, you want to do a question or two? It's up to you. I'm up for it. Right, I got a lot of time. <laughs> like most of them are from Antonio. Let me see. There's one, two, three. Four, five, oh, six, Lord, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> from Antonio alone? Yeah, wow. from Antonio alone. So I we pick, got I, can 40, I pick a number between one and nine? Responses, nine of them are from him. I, he's going to get one question. And I, but here's the thing. I appreciate the fact that he gave us nine questions. I do. That being said, I'm going to pick a number between one and nine, and then you, you give me that question. <laughs> can, can you do that? No, because oh. he doesn't. there's no Rambles order on and on. to them. He doesn't – like. Yeah. Most people would put them in a thread. You right. know, you you do your tweet and then you reply to that tweet with the next one, so you get a nice little string of them. But they're just it, all over the shop. Just, so I'm just going to read them all out, oh. and then I'm going to answer whatever I'm interested in. All right, I'm not, we're not going to answer all of them. Okay, please. you go. Right here, I saw Royal Quest three, and these were very good. I really enjoyed, but like this Naito versus another feud feel feud. It feels very cold. But to be fair, I already told this to one of your listeners, which you can see below that product since the elite left have been cold. He didn't took it kindly. But what I said, it's facts. The product does feel cold since the elite left like or hate it. It's true. I know Damon loves Bullet Club, but facts, David Finley is Bullet Club leader and this feud between Naito and Sonata says it also already said, said Bullet Club? Who said that? So we've said all that. Like, we agree with you. So to spin or add in you guys, how should NJPW fix coldness? Let's Per se, B, were it was before the pandemic, aka before the elite doing what I said or not, how should NGPW fix its coldness, in your opinion? Thogus, that's my question. Well, uh, answer that one quickly. Push all the young guys. You know, I want to see Suji and Uemura and Narita to a lesser extent and um, Suji, did I say Suji already? Umino, all of those guys, gay kids. Yep. Let's get Oscar, um, Fujita, let's get Oiwa back. I, I want to see the next generation doing some stuff and not just clogging up the mid cards. Uh, by the way, SLB means Benfica, or in this case, Sport Lisboa, a ben- e Benfica. That's why Sporting is Sporting Club de Portugal, not Sporting Lisbon, because no club in Portugal has Lisbon on the name apart from Benfica, which is Sport Lisboa, a Benfica. Plus, when Sporting refers itself as club, they refer to being the club of a country of Portugal, not the city of Lisbon, hence Portugal, mm. not Lisboa. It's other reason why sporting is just called sporting, not sporting Lisbon. So he's Portuguese football lessons, you guys. That's interesting. I didn't know that. So I'll, I'll tell you that. I'll bank that one. Um, the, 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 any, the, any sardines? Any talk of sardines? No sardines. No, we've not had any sardine correspondent this week. God which damn is, it. Very disappointing. He's he's sent the <laughs> sporting Lisbon information three times, so <laughs> he's very, very keen exciting. for that. He's team. very into that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's do Daryl's question. Okay. I think that we've had consistent challenge with faction leaders leaving over the last decade and tapping someone new on the shoulder. It's worked great. Mm-hmm. AJ and Bullet Club, Kenny and Bullet Club, Okada and Chaos, and it has worked less than great, David Finley. So where do you see United Empire going from here? They're honestly my favourite group of Me the too. last couple of years. 
And they do seem to have great chemistry with each other, but that has always been with Will at the helm. What options do you see for them? Maybe Cobb graduates to that post. Well, my, my horrible feeling is that we're done. This is just the extended universe thing, and Osprey is still United Empire leader, but it just has his sort of United Empire in um, in in AEW with Aussie Open, which is horrible, and I hate it. But I don't consider Aussie Open still to be part of United Empire, and when Osprey signs with AEW, I won't consider him United Empire. And they should do the decent thing and have him put over a future leader, as you would normally put in this case. But then. The, the precedent is there for stupid shit to happen when people do sign with AW because you will recall uh, Jay White. Who did he put over in his last match before leaving New Japan? Eddie Kingston. Oh. So I'm not holding my breath for anything uh, particularly cohesive or, or forward thinking. Uh, you know, he should be putting over someone, you know, a young guy who could be future leader, you know, great O'Connor, great O'Connor to beat him and, and become United and money. That's what should happen. But we are so horribly cucked by Tony that uh, we're going to get something stupid instead. Do you know why we have factions, Joel? We have factions in New Japan Pro Wrestling for to annoy you deliberately. Well, yes, number one, uh, but but also uh, it is a way to organize the roster when it comes to travel, when it comes to training, when it comes to a, a myriad of different logistical things within New Japan Pro Wrestling. And the fact that it somehow gets morphed into these sub-genre faction-esque things in other promotions is quite honestly annoying the fuck out of me. Uh, That is a New Japan Pro Wrestling thing. And there really isn't any reason to have any type of United Empire, Bullet Club, Los I mean, listen, I, the only one I would give you half credit is the Los Ingobernomics, because that's that wasn't even started in fucking Japan. Um, that being said, uh, yeah, I, I look, if, if Will goes, United Empire goes. Sorry. And, and I'm with you. United Empire had, was probably my favorite faction. And I think it peak United Empire was like those Reservoir Dog fucking vignettes where they're all in their suits and they're walking the streets of uh, uh, what looked like uh, looked like uh, Shinjuku, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that was peak. Gideon Gret peak, peak. It's it's it. Let it die. If Will goes, let it die. Uh, let's do one more from our good friend Minty. He says, uh, which New Japan wrestler would you entrust to shave your asshole?" When thinking about your answer, please consider all aspects such as the quality of workmanship, thoughtfulness for a sensitive and potentially dangerous task, yeah. and all-round service experience. I think Yo would be really good at shaving an anus. I, I, well, I, truth be told, spoiler, I did see this in our Discord, and I was just like, not that I was, like, I was just like, all right, I, okay, I get it. We're the the wacky podcast that's going to talk about ass shavings. Um, who shaves their asshole? Do you sh- honestly? Do you uh, look? Do you shave your asshole? No, no. that's an insane thing. I, I, I've never sh- I'm not. I've never have shaved. Like I've never had it. Had to warrant. It just doesn't get enough sunlight for anything to grow, right? <laughs> right? Like there's nothing growing. Uh just leave it alone. It's, it's like a fucking um what the fuck? Like what's that plant? They're like little cactuses. What is it? Succotat? Not a succotat. Succulent. A succulent. That's what it is. <laughs> just leave it alone. Every once in a while you can get a little wet, you know, clean it off a little bit, dust it off. But aside from that, it's it's, it's a very low maintenance type of uh thing. Right? Our new t shirt slogan, the big anus on the front saying, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Just leave it alone. It's because the more you fuck with it, pardon the pun, that's that's when you get into all the craziness. So my answer is leave it alone. Don't don't shave it. There is no shaving. I would not trust anyone to shave it. Uh I'm leaving it alone. Of course. Cleanliness? Absolutely. You want to make sure it's clean. That's the first step. But aside from that, listen, there's no need, no need to get fucking creative down there. You're not going to reinvent the wheel, like shaving your asshole. There's no need. All right? Take it from me. (laughs) 
giving you, giving everyone advice. Now, listen, if you're a fucking hairy beast, all right, look, you're on your own. Uh, you're, I, I can't help you. You, you got, you got other problems. Uh, but even the hairiest person I've ever known had no need to shave an asshole. Their ass, maybe. Asshole, no. Come on, please, please. Preposterous question. All right, sorry, Minty. I like Minty. He did the bots for our Discord, so oh. even though it is a terrible question, yeah. and I thought I'd uh, do it masonic. I get that. the spirit so, of it, though. Right. You know, I get the spirit. You know, it's funny. You know, I get it. It's fine. I'm not offended by it in any way, but I'm just saying, leave the asshole. Alone. Leave it alone. Yep. That's the last word on today's podcast. All right, uh, that will do for today. Uh, da, 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 nah, da, fuck it. Where? Just wrap it up. Just say goodbye. Yeah, bye, everyone. Hi, I'm Case Lowe, co-host of the Open the Voice Gate podcast. The one question I'm constantly asked when it comes to Dragon Gate is how do I get into the promotion? Well, stop asking and start listening to the Open the Voice Gate podcast released every Wednesday on the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. For exclusive news and show reviews, look no further than the leader in Dragon Gate coverage, Open the Voice Gate. Hello, do you like New Japan Pro Wrestling? Are you a Shin Nihon freak? If so, check out the Super Jcast with Joel and Damon on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. And even if you fucking hate New Japan Pro Wrestling, listen to the Super Jcast anyway. Not just for our great show reviews, analysis, and pastrami sandwiches, mm-hmm. but there's also usually some dick jokes somewhere in the obligatory opening 30 minutes of absolute nonsense we chat about every single week. That's the Super Jcast for all the best talk about New Japan Pro Wrestling, crisps, and pornography.